Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to finally culminate in what we've been trying to do with the polar equations and the polar coordinates that we've talked about the last few sections. And we're going to tackle the topic of area and length in polar coordinates. I could have titled this section Integration in Polar Coordinates, and it would mean exactly the same thing. You see, what we've been doing up till now is, first we talked about the polar coordinates and what they are and how to convert to rectangular. Then we talked about the polar functions, and we talked about what those look like and how to convert back and forth between rectangular. And I told you from the beginning that there were certain problems, usually involving circular symmetry, that uh, are really easy to solve in polar coordinates. And I think you can see why when you look at the equation of a circle being so simple, uh, uh, and, and so it lends itself to having simple functions in polar coordinates when you have that circular symmetry, okay? So this is calculus, and you're going to get to calculus at some point. We're going to do that in this section. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn about basically integration in polar coordinates. And it sounds, I mean, when you tell somebody on the street, oh, I'm doing integration in polar coordinates, it sounds really complicated, really hard. It really isn't hard, okay? It's no different than integration that you've been doing before. It's just that now instead of integrating along x, you might be integrating along theta or something like this. And so you'll be using different variables. You have to really understand what you're doing because you, you, you need to be able to set the problem up, right? But fundamentally, it's no different than the regular integration. You're taking little slices of the function, okay, and you're adding them up. That's all you're doing. So what we're going to do first before we even get to the integrals is we're going to do a little bit of, of uh, learning about the area of a, of a section of a circle, okay? So what I'm going to tell you here without proof that if I have a circle like this, let's say, this is a circle, okay, and let's say I'm interested in the area of this pi wedge, okay, so you see it has a curved boundary here, and I've got, you know, something coming from the center, it's a pi wedge, and this, this is a distance r, because it's a radius of the circle, right, and this uh, th this angle here that, that describes the how open, how much of a pi I have is just called theta, okay, so I'm going to tell you without any proof at all, because you know I don't want to prove everything, and honestly I don't think it would add much if we did prove it, the area of this shaded piece, this entire piece right here, if we were to you know, shade it, uh, is going to be equal to 1 half r squared times theta. Okay. Well the first thing you realize is you have r squared, so it, it does sort of look like a, an angle formula because usually uh, you have squares running around formulas with angle because you have to multiply two things together. It also depends on theta because obviously it depends how big or small this pi piece is, it's dependent upon theta. Okay? So this is the area of this pi wedge, and I'm just going to leave it right there. It's very, very important. Okay? So Next, I'm going to ask you another question. Given that that is the area of that wedge, of that pi, of that circle with a circular boundary between these two points, okay? Let me draw a different picture for you. Here is a coordinate system, x and y, okay? And let's say that on this guy right here in this quadrant, there's this, there's this function roughly goes like this, okay? So you see, you can represent it in polar uh, equation because as you sweep your, your uh, theta here, you're getting different values of the radius, r, that will be the distance to the origin. So you can definitely write a polar equation of this little arc right here, okay, a polar function. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna cut this guy off right here and I'm gonna say, okay, if I go up to here and I go, let's say, over to here, Okay, then uh, this is what I'm going to call theta is equal to A. So this is the angle uh, where I start looking here. And this is theta is equal to B. And you'll see where I'm getting at here for, for, uh, in just a second. And let's say that what